here, walking you through the code if you wish to. Um, <clears throat> so here's another way of looking at this. What if we are processing a prime number, for instance? What if we, we ask a user to enter a number, you enter 15, and we want to check whether 15 is a prime number? How do we implement that using loops? And, and we're using very uh, elementary examples here from primary school because we know the definition of the prime number. Prime number is a number that is divisible by one and itself. So, so you already know what you have to do. Just check for numbers that are divisible by one and itself. Then they are prime numbers. The question is how do we do that, right? How would we do that? What would be our initial values? How would we implement that? There's no solution for this, sadly. It was supposed to be an exercise. How do we do that? If we are to follow through our steps. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. The question says, uh, interesting question here. The question says, prompt. So the range will be dictated by the user. The user could say, I want to, uh, um, it's, it's actually not a range, it's a number, it's, a, it's a number, any number you use. The user can enter 120, I want to check if 120 is a prime number. Is it a prime number? Don't know. Turns out that, uh, uh, by the way, just in case people are wondering here, uh, is, is it is prime? I, I wanted to check if we could check if we quickly in the high level programming language. The high level programming language has functions for these things is prime, and then you feed it two, it will tell you yes or no or something, right? But so a user enters 15 or 100. How do we check if it's a prime number? Think about this for a second. Maybe 100 is, is, uh, is a bit too further off here, but a user enters five. Is five a prime number? How would we check if five is a prime number? Um, okay, how would we check if 10 was a prime number? Then? How would we check if this number is divisible by one, by only one and itself? Yes. If the remainder is? Okay, so, so here's the thing, I'm just, uh, uh, forget about MIPS, right? I'm just asking, we have 10. How do we check if 10 is a prime number? Someone is thinking, and, and that's exactly what I wanted to talk about here. So if you, if you, if you pay particular attention to what, what you say, you look at 10, you better think about the things that are before 10, and 10 itself. So what you'd have to do here is, for, for this thing to work, what you'd have to do is, if the user is interested in 10, you will start from one, all the way up to the number that the user specified, in this case 10 and you start checking these numbers one by one. You divide 10 by one, right? Because we know that uh, a, a, num a prime number can be divisible by one is fine. If it's zero, it's fine, right? But you check. If 10, if 10 divided by two returns a remainder of zero, then you know immediately that 10 will never be a prime number. Is this making sense? So essentially, what I'm trying to say is you have to leverage loops if someone entered not 10 but 1,000, what you would have to do is you systematically check all the 1,000 numbers. You start dividing the 1,000 by the first number, which is one, by two, by three. But usually, you, you know that um, such a, a brute force kind of approach would, would make sense if you just say, the moment I come across a number that is not the number the user has specified that goes into the number, then I'll just converge, right? Do you understand what I mean? If you're if you, if you working with 1,000 and you start by 
by processing 1,000 by 1, remainder is 0, right? Prime number can be divisible by 1, right? 1,000 by 2, remainder is 0. If, if you get to a stage where you 2 can go into 1,000, why do you have to continue checking when you know that it's already not a prime number? That's what I'm saying. Do you understand what I mean? So like if it was uh, maybe, like if it was uh, maybe uh, six, right? For six, for six, instead of you, I mean six is a small number, instead of you checking one, two, three, four, five, six times, dividing systematically six times, what you can do is you start six by one, remainder is zero, it's fine because you know, a prime number can be deserved by one, but six by two, remainder is zero as well. Why do you have to continue checking? No need to. Yes. Okay. Um, is this making sense? I mean, can, can you guys do this? Uh, can you do this uh, as homework at home or something? Yeah. 